You know, whenever I have a bad day at the office, I look to AEW to cheer me up. Not because I have my Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho figures, but because my new Cody figure from Walmart or RingsideCollectibles.com can smash them both. Get out of here. Get to Walmart. Pick them up from Jazzwares. Let's uh, let's get to the the next match. We're going to take a little bit of a trip to the dark side because all year Randy Orton has been feuding with the Undertaker. He lost at WrestleMania, but as the two continue their rivalry into SummerSlam, Orton finally picks up a win with the help of his returning father, Cowboy Bob Orton. On SmackDown, the Ortons drove a U-Haul truck out and wheeled out a casket with a mannequin of the Undertaker inside. But it appears to be the actual human being in the casket. Kind of a fun little skit. The following week, the Ortons come out with the casket and the mannequin again, except this time it is actually the undertaker. And it's a cool visual when undertaker grabs Randy's throat and gets out of the casket. And around this time, undertaker is maybe more noticeably than ever before wearing mascara. Is this a touch that creative services is going to be heavily involved in when you're doing these type of skits? No. And I don't think that he was wearing anything more than normal. Maybe he was just extra tired. Maybe it was from being in the, in the casket a little bit too long or not long enough. Maybe not long enough. The next like, week, I'm wearing mascara right now. Nope. Really? Do I look like I'm wearing mascara? No. Okay. Well, okay, cool. I mean, do you walk around your house at nine in the morning with mascara on as, as a rule with doc Brown hair? You never know. I don't know what y'all are doing up there. Listen, see, are you saying, see, I think that some of our people that don't speak Southern see, I know what you're saying. You're you're you've changed. You're basically saying doc Brown, but to some people they're hearing dark Brown, dark Brown. Yeah. No, it's doc Brown. Everybody gets That's the reference. 1.21 gigawatts. Everybody knows what that is, but you, nobody knows what 1.21 gigawatts is. They, they know what back to the future, Marty. He never said that. He did in my goddamn movie. Brad Gilmore has a whole goddamn book about uh, back or to the future. Wait, Brad Gilmore wrote a book about that? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yup, yeah, see? And you're talking about two point. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Watch. This is a different Brad Gilmore. Yeah. Yeah. I thought this was Booker's Brad. It is Booker's Brad. That's Booker's Brad. That's Booker's Brad. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know under that big bouffant hair, he had a back to uh, the future he got brain. Some motherfucking hair. Dude, he's got some TV hair. Dude, he, I swear to God, he must spend like eight hours on that How shit. How does Brad Gilmore not work for WWE? Because he works down there. It feels like he's been on like a 32 year tryout. Y'all should bring him up. Call him up. I'll call him right now if you want me to. He's a good dude. All right, let's All keep right. it going here. Can we talk about something besides your fucked up hair today? Why? I'm not the one talking about my fucked up hair. You brought it up. You brought it up. I brought it up originally. You brought it up again. You're talking about my dark hair. It's not dark. It's very, I know. it's more gray now than ever. You should dye it. Then it would be dark. Wait a minute. Why you want me to go on a diet? I don't next How week. The fuck I'm... Is going on a diet going to affect my hair? Well, let's just try it and see. Okay. Next week on SmackDown, the undertaker's gong heads during a match between the Orton's and rowdy, Roddy Piper, allowing Piper to win pinning cowboy Bob. Of course, once again, the camera tricks are used to show a casket with lifelike mannequins, but it's really just both Orton's laid in this jumbo casket. Orton's wearing an NWO themed RKO shirt during this time period. Uh, and you originally called the Kamala undertaker match, a coffin match. But since then it's been referred to as a casket match. Is this a, a Vince McMahon ism that we, we stopped using the word coffin and we started using the word casket. Well, I think that there's, well, first of all, there's two different things. I think for the most part, a wooden coffin is a you know it's called a coffin and a casket is 
the more traditional what people you know use now, which is usually made of some type of metal or, or what have you. Um, and I could be wrong. I'm just making up shit right now. I mean, they are a little different, but I think it's just based on the shape, or at least that was my thinking. Yeah. Okay. I'll go with that because like, coffin is like the, the traditional Dracula, you know, yes. do, do, do and casket is just a rectangle. Yeah. Okay. You got to get hot about it, I, but it, hypothetically, this is not one of those. We can't say hospital, pal. We say medical facility. It's not a Vince thing, right? No, it's just what it is. Okay. Back to no mercy. Uh, Cowboy Bob and his son Randy are out next with a handicap casket match. The Druids it carry. Sounds funny the way you said that. Cowboy Bob and his son Randy. Well, that's the truth, is it not? It's like Roy Rogers and his horse trigger. Okay. Don't know why. But, okay, folks, tweet hey hey Conrad if if it, it's uh it's at hey hey it's Conrad. Okay, well he said. Yeah. And tweet okay. me about what now? About if that's funny or not. It's not. The druids carry a casket to the ring, to the chanting in Latin or some other foreign language. Are they chanting something funny that we should slow down and record and play backwards? Is it like uh who booked this shit in backwards or something like that? If you'd like to, the undertaker enters and passes the exiting druids on the way to the ring, which is a cool visual. Uh, the two have feuded all year and it actually continues after this event as well. As the match begins, surprise cowboy, Bob is bumping all over the place. He's dressed like an old grandpa shopping for a pocket knife at Walmart. And he goes from taking flat back bumps to just landing on his butt slowly midway through the match. Uh, There's only so much a man can take. Undertaker remains mostly dominant through the match until the Orton hit a double suplex off the second rope. And that's cowboy Bob's old finishing maneuver. Undertaker struggles to get both Orton's to stay incapacitated. And eventually cowboy Bob uses a fire extinguisher to blind the undertaker. And the two knock the dead man into the casket. Randy hits him with a chair shot to the head and closes the lid for the win. It goes 19 minutes and six seconds. And the observer gave it a dud rating. I like the idea of the father son duo, but well, it's maybe not the best match we ever saw. Two questions here. How did undertaker like working with this father son duo? And more importantly, how did Randy like working with his dad? I think, uh, they both loved it on, on both sides. As far as undertaker and Randy, good Lord, the chemistry there was out of this world. They had great matches, enjoyed working with one another, throwing Bob into that mix and Randy getting to work with his dad. I think for him was one of those dream come trues and being able to work with his old man, who was one of the greatest of all time was pretty damn cool from Randy's point of view and Bob's point of view, getting to come out with his son and kind of have that Orton legacy displayed. So to all of that, I think that they, they really enjoyed all around working with one another. The Orton's then do the old rumble 98 spot with the casket being set on fire. So once, once again, the undertaker has been murdered live on pay-per-view. He wasn't murdered. He was burned alive. That's different. Oh, so he's burned alive, but not dead. Right. But I thought the undertaker was always dead but he wasn't murdered. Okay. I think I'm with you. Uh, yeah, I was, I was taking large poopoos in my pants while this was going on. Cause Randy had a hard time getting the damn casket started. I was just off camera and was telling the, one of the stage managers down on the floor, I'm going to run in and grab Randy to tell him what to do to get this damn thing started because it was getting uncomfortably long. And as I started to go, the damn thing finally lit and I didn't have to go and get thrown by Randy, but it was, it was pretty close where I was contemplating, not, you know, just tell him I'm going to go out and, and grab Randy and kind of follow up, follow off screen so that Randy can get this goddamn thing lit and I can send someone in to help him get it lit. Is one of the tricks you've got to poke a hole in the top. Like you've got to crack it open 
in order for you got to get air going, man. Yes. Just like a big green egg. You got to get some airflow. Got to get that air flowing. Why did you like make the thumb, thumb up the poo pooer? Well, because you I was thinking that. about the big green egg. You open a little vent at the bottom, you open the vent at the top, and now you've got the airflow. And that's what fire needs is oxygen to grow. We all need oxygen to grow. Jesus Christ. This could be a chore sometimes. Um, when, when you're setting you him, love me. I love you a lot. And it's nice that we're actually on video and I get to see my friend for the first time in a long time. Oh, even with your stupid 1.21 gigawatt hair. Okay. What about your fucking hair? Hey, my hair looks fucking good. Don't, my hair looks good. I don't want to hear no shit from you. Hey, so chat me up about this, uh, these type of stunts. Is this something you have to, uh, well, facilitate in an unconventional way with the venue? Well, anytime that you use fire in an enclosed arena, yeah, you need to, uh, meet with the fire marshal, have a discussion meet with the fire marshal, the building, everybody make sure that it is safe for the thousands in attendance and make sure that everybody's cool with it. So. Yeah, this kind of a situation is not something you really want to fuck with because there is a potential that things can go wrong. So as far as safety and as far as doing it exactly right, you got to play by the books on this because it truly is dangerous, not only for the performers, but for the audience members. So, yeah, this one you got to kind of play by the rules and make sure that everybody's on board and most importantly that everybody's safe. Well, it is quite the visual. Um, I know you're not going to tell us, but I assume that Taker was, I mean, obviously Taker wasn't actually in the casket. Does he slip? Why is that obvious? Well, because you don't want to burn Mark Calloway. I'm not going to burn Mark Calloway. So is he going to roll under the ring or the, like a trap door gimmick? Is that the move? Goddamn damn magic. <sighs> God, I remember look, when you. I saw him. Look, I saw him go into the, the casket. Did you see that? Yeah. I saw the casket go up in flames. Did you see that? Yeah. God damn it. It was a fucking miracle. Next. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.